G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, you know, having a metal aid is all good good stuff. You can play around the shed to your heart's content, make uh, lots of noise and chips and maybe make something useful that might even work. And uh, along the way, while you're learning about using your lathe, you can also learn how to make your own tooling and you can save a, a lot of money by doing all your own tooling. Because tooling does cost a, you know, an arm and a leg, really. So in this drawer you can see a whole lot of boring bars I've made up for various jobs I've worked on. Um, they not, may not be pretty, but they do the job. You can see I've bronzed, hard bronze brazed carboid tips onto them. I've even brazed up the whole unit with the hard bronze braze. And here's a high-speed steel one I welded on with a stick welder. High-speed steel right through all ground, but that's an expensive way of doing it, you know. If you can braze your cardboard chips or your high-speed steel tips on, you save a fortune because you don't have to use expensive metals as the base part of your tooling. Anyway, as you can see, this is all done with bronze, hard bronze brazing. I know some people do use silver solder to do this. Mm, no thanks, not for me. That's nowhere near as strong. I just, uh, no, I wouldn't do that. And going back a while, I did a video showing how you can ha um, braze steel to steel or whatever using plain copper electrical wire. And that video got a lot of hits. A lot of people were very interested. You know, you can you do it with gas torch that's suitably hot or you can do it with TIG, and uh, yeah, it worked good. I had bronze on one end, uh, brass, uh, copper on the other end. I load tested the whole thing and neither end gave out. Both of them held up and the metal, in the middle just all screwed up and twisted like wrought iron. So yeah, very strong welds. I did have a few, couple of people, a few people say, oh no, you know, you use galvanised steel and the galvanising, the zinc and the galvanising um, combined with the copper to form brass and I thought wow okay you know whatever you think but that's <laughs> it sounded pretty far-fetched to me so anyway I, we're moving on and today being a quiet Sunday I, I was just thinking well, what can I do today I have a play around with it. and I thought let's try using copper plain copper electrical wire to put carbide tips onto the on the tooling Let's just see how good it is. Let's just see if that galvanising really was the secret elixir. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to just use plain steel, no galv, and carbide, and we'll just see what happens. All right, here's a bit of uh, old tool steel. And here's an old carbide uh, indexable cutter off of a face mill. You can see I've ground the end of the tool steel down and uh, well, I think it's still steel. And we're going to put our little carbide uh, tip on there like that and we're going to heat it up and we're going to apply some plain old copper electrical wire with a bit of flux. We're going to see if this works. If it doesn't work we know it doesn't work. I'll be using map gas equivalent, uh, not oxy. Oxy would be better because it would be hotter, but we use a map gas equivalent, which is an LPG torch designed for doing hard bronze brazing, and I've used that in previous videos. Uh, it should do the job uh, with that size piece of steel. So let's get on with it. Right, what we'll do is we'll flax the the face where the uh, bit of carbide is going to go. We'll bronze onto. Uh, we'll put some copper filler onto that, so we basically key it, and then we'll put the little carbide uh, tip on top. And we'll bronze down through the centre, and that should then bond it all. Uh, it's always a good idea if you can do get away with it to actually key both the surfaces with bronze or whatever you're using for the bra brazing medium. That way you get a better bond than just relying on the capillary action of it coming in over the edges. So that's how we do it in this case.
Oh, let's see what happens. That was bloody hard going. Took a lot of heat. All right, well, here's the finished article. It looks like it's taken, so now it's just a matter of cleaning it up with the, uh, the wire buff. It was tricky getting it positioned because uh, being small and light, there's a lot of heat bouncing back from that brick. I should have had gloves on, I suppose. But anyway, it looks like it's taken, so we'll, uh, yeah, we'll clean it up and just see how it looks. Okay, that looks like it's bonded pretty well. Certainly as good as bronze, just bronze manganese, bronze rod. Took a lot more heat. I mean, it does copper, you know, it really takes the heat. But it's doable, so if you haven't got a bronze rod, yeah, or you're too tight to buy bronze rods, you got gas, well, so I'll sharpen it up and we'll give it a go. because I just tried it on the shear line. So the shear line can actually just carbide. <laughs> Would you believe it, eh? Let's do it. Grabby, eh? Who would have thought a Sherlock could use carbide? That was a fairly heavy cut. Well, for this little thing, I'll go a bit lighter. I might just change the head angle slightly. Eh, get rid of a little bit more follow up rake. <laughs> good as that? Okay, that's uh, not really recommended. I think this is really a high speed steel cutter lathe, but this shows you it will, uh, it will turn carbide. I was being fairly fast too. If you fed it really slow it would be better. I'll come in real close and we'll do one more run. Right, I'm playing around with the profiles a bit on this just to see how this goes. I've just made it a bit more rounded because you can't go too bigger radius on it will chatter and this is this works not supported either and it's fairly hard steel that it's not uh, it's not mild steel it's uh, it's probably about oh, 1080 I'd say so it's not uh, getting it easy all right we'll try that
that's better. I mean, it should be supported, really, but we're going harder again. <laughs> finish off with high speed still but that's reasonable I suppose so there you go the copper the copper uh, filler rod works great on carbide no problem whatsoever and uh, yeah it just shows you that you know it uh, it'll work just as good as hard bronze braze cost you nothing a bit more gas probably because it does take a lot, quite a bit more heating but I did that with that LPG torch that bullfinch auto torch that did it if you went into really big big carbide you might struggle a bit with map gas or lpg like i used but you know it shows you it will do the job and if you've got oxy even better so there you go folks that's it for the day that's uh, that's pretty good going all right well wasn't that impressive the carbide bonded beautifully with the copper so the copper, and that's just on bare, ungalvanised steel. I mean, a couple of people in the previous uh, video I did where I showed how you could braze using copper wire as filler said, oh, you know, it's, bra it's uh, combining with the galvanising on the metal and it's making brass. I, I mean, I thought that was bullshit myself. But anyway, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. As you can see, this has worked perfectly good. The little lathe has worked great. I mean, I never thought you'd better use carbide on a sure line. Amazing, it finish isn't too bad. You've got to keep the radius pretty tight on these, otherwise you get chatter, but that's not bad. And you can always finish with high speed steel anyway. And it was spinning at 2000 RPM, the maximum in low range. You can see I've squared the motor up, I just put a little spacer plate in there, that solved that problem. The thing's running like a charm. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. So, okay, that could wrap up the video, but just to see how strong this stuff really is, I'm going to stick it in the Chinese lathe and put a big load on it, and we'll see whether that, that copper lets go. I don't think it will. All right. We'll do a one mil cut in bottom gear, because uh, I'm not worried about finish. I'm just going to show you how the copper stands up to the load, so we'll put maximum load on that this whole lathe can do otherwise it will just bulk down so we'll go one mil Where are we? one mil 1.02 that's near enough and we're spinning about 140 rpm on the coarsest feed so maximum load this old girl can do it <coughs> bit of duress for all thing. All right, well that's a pretty horrible cut because it was spinning way, way, way too slow. But that was all about load, not about finish. And that was pretty much th this uh, lathe's um, limit. It was um, chugging along there. So there you go. The, the little copper bronzing, brazing job worked out perfectly good. Definitely as strong as proper bronze rod could even be stronger 
because bronze is mainly copper anyway, and you know, straight copper could even be stronger, I don't know, but it certainly did the job, and uh, yeah, well, there you go. Well, there you have it, mission complete, the tooling worked out perfectly good, uh, the little lathe did a great job, and uh, yeah, it's certainly a lot more capable than I thought it would be. Now, would I bother uh, using electrical wire, you know, copper electrical wire instead of hard bronze brazing rods? Not really. Not unless I was in a bind, I want to do some strong uh, brazing and didn't have any bronze rod, well then I'd go for the copper, provided, provided the heat source I had was strong enough. And uh, yes, it is as strong yeah, as you could ask for. And uh, no, the uh, galvanising obviously has no effect. And yes, the armchair experts are wrong once again. But uh, what more can I say? Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found it interesting. Um, yeah, time for a bit of lunch and I'll see you next time. Okay, cheers.